The initial interest for researching this topic came from my time working on retrofit schemes and pilot projects for the Northern Ireland Housing Executive. I was curious to find out how modular construction could be implemented in order to help with the current social housing crisis here in Northern Ireland. Social housing takes up a large percentage of our housing stock. It is important that in the future we place a f- focus on building new social housing schemes that fall in line with government targets to tackle carbon fuel emissions. The main aim of my research was to find out if modular had the potential to compete with traditional as the main method of construction used for social housing in Northern Ireland. I was keen to find out some personal views on the subject from experts within the building industry. I began my research by looking into the main factors that are pushing our need for change. We are now entering into an hour focused on digital engineering and off-site construction methods, with potential cuts to the construction workforce reaching 25% within the next 10 years. Northern Ireland, having issues with an ageing social housing stock, will have to look at new ways to produce suitable homes more efficiently. The graph displayed on the screen shows statistics from the Northern Ireland social housing waiting list, ranging from the years 2000 to 2017. The information shows how a number of people in so-called housing stress continue to grow while housing allocations decrease and new build projects continue at a low output rate. I looked at relevant case studies based on the mass construction of modular homes used for social housing schemes within England, Australia and China. Results showed that the addition of modular homes within all three areas helped to ease problems with homelessness, whilst also providing cost and environmental benefits simultaneously. The next table displayed on the screen shows the estimated cost for six modular homes constructed for the use of social housing. The table compares the cost for modular units against the modern methods construction and traditional design. When compared to the others, modular design is the most expensive construction cost. After finding valid information that could build an argument both for and against the idea of modular construction, I felt that I needed to talk to local industry experts in order to gain their personal perspective. I travelled to the headquarters of the McAvoy Group to talk with their design coordinator and head of their current social housing project, Alan Fox. Alan talked me through the local project that was commencing in collaboration with Clanmill Housing Association. Through our conversation, I learned how the modular social housing project was the first of its kind in Northern Ireland. When questioned about the price of constructing a modular home, Alan agreed that it can be more expensive compared to other methods. Although he explained how modular homes can be constructed 40% quicker than traditional and noted that money could be made back quickly through tenant rent income. Some of the benefits that Alan proceeded to talk about were how modular design allows for less site disruption and overall waste within the use of a controlled factory environment. Alan mentioned how the consistent high level of quality builds could be achieved through daily monitoring and experienced contractors. He explained how M&E plug and play systems can be used to save time and money whilst ensuring that modular design is suited for construction homes with high level of thermal efficiency. Although Alan believed modular construction was suitable for social housing projects, he highlighted that the lack of modular companies within Northern Ireland meant that the construction costs would remain higher than traditional. He believed this to be the main drawback for the social housing industry and noted how the competitive work in England has helped to create a more realistic price bracket for landlords. Next, I travelled to Belfast to talk to Sharon McGagan, an architect working in the quality improvement team within the Northern Ireland Housing Executive. Sharon informed me on how she had completed research into various types of modern methods of construction and how she was considering implementing one within her new build pilot scheme. When talking to Sharon, she gave me her ideas on what she thought made modular construction suitable for social housing projects. Some benefits I noted were, again, the speed of delivery and the control quality control aspects, along with potential standardised template designs being useful for larger scale schemes. Sharon believed that a focus could be set on building fabric to ensure the high level of thermo- thermal efficiency and air tightness is met within the potential homes. Sharon provided knowledge from previous schemes that suggested different council requirements are made for buildings to be in specific stages before planning for utilities and noted how this could create delays, therefore eliminating the main benefit of a fast delivery time. A valid point was made addressing how the skilled workforce needed to produce modular homes could be hard to acquire within Northern Ireland, whilst room for hours with modular design is minimal and could create a problem with potential building control amendments. After gaining the perspective of two industry experts, I was able to make my own conclusion on the topic. 
Although there are many positive aspects that come with designing and building a modular home, I feel that the lack of resources on modular companies available in Northern Ireland suggests that a competitive price will be hard to find. Until a competitive price can be produced, social housing landlords will continue to choose traditional methods. Thank you for listening.